Seems like every year in the fishing tackle industry, there are advancements on advancements. You think everything's been done, but designers and anglers are always tinkering with stuff and jack-in-the-box presentations cool. emerge every year. Especially from the bass crowd, who are always innovating with new ways to catch fish. Today we join James Linder and Jeremy Smith in midsummer on a natural lake as they chase largemouth bass with one of these advanced new presentations, the Tokyo Rig, and share some tips for making this radical new presentation work for you on your waters. You'll be amazed at the rig's versatility and fish catching prowess. What they encounter is some hot largemouth so action good. you're not going to want to miss. Stay tuned as we go advanced Tokyo rigging. A little bit better size one. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Wow. Oh, missed him. What? Just missed one. There he's back. Get him. There we go. That felt good. You got one too, or are we doubled yes, up? Sir. Yeah. How do you like that? Wow. Ooh, I got a pretty nice one here. What do you got? Great big boy here. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. double big boys. How do you like that? Our first spot of the morning. Doubling up on big old fish. Wow. Look at that. Huh? Sweet. And I caught that fish on one of the most innovative presentations I've seen in bass fishing. It is just absolutely an unbelievable rig. It's called the Tokyo Rig. Designed for flipping and pitching and heavy cover. However, we found it has a lot more applications yeah. we're going to share with you yeah. today. Get her back. See, dude. All right, that guy got the best of my, my worm, so I'll have to rebate. But this is the Tokyo rig right here. It's, it's relatively interesting. You can see right now I'm fishing with a big, giant, big bite, 10 inch worm, a classic big bass bait for summertime. But I've got this five out worm hook. It's attached to a ring. And then we've got this little wire shaft. And on here I've got one of VMC's new, this is a, a mojo weight that seems to go through the cover really well up and down. And then it's got a swivel here. But the idea with this is, is when it goes through cover, this leads through and it just fishes incredibly well. <clears throat> but the other thing we're realizing with this bait is not only does it work in heavy cover, right now we're actually fishing a rock spot and just dragging this worm along the bottom. That tungsten is going tick, 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 and that big worm's fluttering and it's just off the bottom. So this has an, just an immense number of presentation options you can use with it. And man, does it catch big fish. It's pretty amazing. Jim has uh, 360 imaging on the bow of the boat so he can see what's in front of him off to the sides and in the back here I've got side imaging so I can see to the left and to the right and it really is useful for casting so I'm constantly looking at the side imaging there's a there's a rock spine that tops off at maybe 8-10 feet and it's a real sharp drop on on this side but it's irregular so sometimes you're following the depth that seems right but there will be a boulder over here something over there and it really helps you identify the most likely fish holding locations. These rocks just stick out like a sore thumb and you can see the weed transitions, hard to soft bottom. It's really amazing. And it improves your efficiency so much because you're always making good casts. You're not just blindly casting like you would if you're just looking underneath the boat with 2D, so oh, there was one right there with 2D sonar. This thing really runs over these rocks really nicely. These are really, this is a really snaggy spot. And trying to throw roller jigs in here, you yeah, end up losing a lot of them with this do. Tokyo rig to swim in that swim bait. You yeah. it just follow in the bottom, bottom really easily through here. There he is. I saw that. <laughs> what? That was so cool. I was watching yeah. your rod. That yeah. was sweet. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive, and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. Yes, I think you got a little pocket of them. Up yeah, there, the Jack. warm water. Come here, boy, they're really leaping leaners. What's well, amazing, you can cover water so fast with that, like a crankbait almost. Come here, buddy. Yeah, that's cool. Where Jeremy's throwing that 10-inch worm in the Tokyo rig is really, uh, really 
uh, designed to be a punch bait to actually penetrate really heavy cover. There's other ways you can fish that bait, and I'm actually fishing a, a cane thumper, a swim bait on it, and I lost my oh, lead. The cool thing is, as you can see, it's actually relatively adjustable. It's got this little shaft on there. What I'm gonna do is actually put two weights on there. That's one reverse. One. Sorry, Jim. Oh, Jerry, you got him. Oh, there you go. Sorry to interrupt your, yeah. your deal. Man, oh man, just amazing. Jimmy's really sweeping the front. With that cane thumper, you know, it's, you can work it like a crankbait or a football jig. And I'm fishing a little slower, just kind of dragging the bottom, but it just transmits with that tungsten so incredibly well. I feel a rock with that banging on the bottom, and I'm just soaking it where he can just sweep the whole flat. And I'll soak it a little more. It's pretty cool. See you, dude. Tokyo Rig comes in a couple of different uh, designs. One, it's got a uh, extreme wide gap like this. EWG and then you come with a uh, offset uh, worm hook as well as a flipping hook. With this what I'm going to do is just take a, a 1 8 ounce tungsten weight, slide that on first and then I'm going to take a 3 16 and put it on like this. Then from there all I do is take my pliers and put a little bend in this to hold the wire in place or the, the tungsten in, in place and you can see it just slides down like this. And right now what I'm doing is actually is fishing a swim bait, which is really sort of cool in the fact that what I'm gonna do is fish this a little bit faster, almost sweeping it, uh, reeling it like a slower crankbait on the bottom or a real fast uh, roller jig. You know, reel it relatively quickly in the bottom. It keeps the bait, bait up off the bottom. And as that little weight is ricocheting off the rocks, it really puts a tremendous amount of action or lifelike movement into the swim bait itself. That school should be like right in front of you there. But I do, we're actually casting on the top of a, a rock hump that's about 12, 14 foot on top. I, it just got <laughs> to the bottom and, and another one hit it. But it's pretty efficient in the fact that a lot of times, like in these northern natural lakes, a lot of times we get up on these rocks and you'll have this weird slime on the bottom and it can be sort of tough to, uh, Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah, it can be sort of tough to, you know, drag and roll or jigs. In this particular case, this is a really snaggy spot. And what's cool about this thing, it's super snag resilient, is in the fact it won't get hung up in the rocks. Like that. And the biggest thing is, is this thing is one amazing hooker. I mean, it really hooks the fish because that, uh, the weight is actually separated from the body so when they bite it boy you get a direct drive right into the fish you can see when the fish come up and snap on it the bait's moving along so they're not there's not head weighted they're just grabbing this so you got really good very very good hooking with this system it sort of looks really cumbersome at first but once you start using it boy is it really effective in a number of different fishing situations that we've been fishing out the great thing about bolt control today too is that, like we just hit this wad of fish, it's just boom, boom, boom. Jimmy pushes spot lock, and we can just fan cast this, this entire area. There's, you'll, you'll find a lot of times on spots like this where you have like a weed to rock transition, there'll be an angle where you get bit every cast. What are you saying about this casting angle? What this is, it's sort of interesting because there's like a, a 10 to 12 foot rock spine but as it dumps off in deeper water, there's actually weeds out in deeper water along the edge. And what I'm doing is casting right along where the rocks transition into the weeds is right on this angle here. I can actually see it on my map and 360. So I'm just casting right there. Let it sink down to the bottom. Takes a little second or two to get there. There, I got it. Now I'm just going to actually just slowly start reeling it. And it's just sort of that little weight the tungsten weights is just sort of ricocheting off the bottom and it just it'll sweep over anything i crash into a little clump of weeds bounce over rocks imparts a really cool action into the bait into the bait you know when it actually this bait was actually initially designed to fish through really heavy cover which it's fabulous for a lot of emergent cover 
you know, like what rice and big standing stuff, you know. But it's also really interesting. We've been using it in more deeper water situations as well. Looks like there's a bunch of them down there. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, those are all, those are, some of those are bass and bluegills. Those bigger ones like this right here are probably ba bass right here. The cool thing about the system, like the way I'm fishing it with that swim bait and that tungsten weights on there, and then I'm fishing with braid, boy, it just telegraphs exactly what that bait is doing. I can feel it exactly how that thing is just bouncing along on the bottom. Got a really distinct feel of the rocks when I crash into a weed. And you're just sort of slow rolling it over the bottom. The nice thing about this too is you can actually cover quite a bit of deep water pr pretty quickly with this. This is a pretty good sized spot. It's a long, great big dog leg arm that sticks out here with sort of multi-leveled uh, sort of rock rock piles on it. Oh, got him. Yeah. Ooh. And doubles. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. We're almost out on the tip out here. Yep. Wow, look at that. There we go. Nice. Ooh. Oh, wait, she's, she's a real tail wiggler, isn't it? Here. That's fun. Wow. Oh, come here, dude. Oh, I love fishing that big worm in the summertime. It's one of those baits that I've got confidence in. There's a number of different plastic profiles we can share with you that we like using for, for Tokyo rigging. But big worms in the summer for me. There you go, buddy. Whether you're power fishing largemouth bass inside weeds, rocks, or wood, the same thing applies. Bigger is better. Well, sometimes. Let me explain. Today we're fishing with the Tokyo rig on deep cover in dirty water. You want to get the attention of the fish and let them know there's something moving in their proximity. Most times we like to use oversized baits. This is not clear water finesse fishing by no means. You want to bulk up with size, like a 10 inch big bite creek tail worm or a creature type bait. But there's always an exception as usual in fishing. Today, Jim is using a four inch cane thumper on a Tokyo rig, stitching it across the bottom to get bites, and he is killing it. All this being said, having a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors of softies is in your best interest because every day in the water is different. Here's an interesting color tip we have noticed. Dark soft baits are a better color choice in dirty water because it gives off a great contrast and fish can simply see it better. If you want to make fish black and blue, that's what color you want to use in dark water. What line you choose to fish with is, is always a personal preference. I mean, there's times when, yeah, braid is something you absolutely have to have when you're in, you're in heavy cover. Right now, Jim's fishing a Tokyo rig with, I believe, 30 pound braid, and I'm fishing with Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon. Now, why would he choose braid and I choose fluorocarbon? Well, one of the, the observations I'm making in the way Jim is fishing, he's fishing more in line and he wants that, that great feel with a tight line. Now fluorocarbon, which is great about it, is it transmits bites really good on slack line. Because of the density of the line, I'm able to feel when those fish are picking the baits up off the bottom. I can just feel it through the rod so much better. So if I'm fishing in sparse weed cover or rocks like this in deeper water, my go-to is almost always fluorocarbon, and this new Suffix Advance is just an awesome fluoro because it handles so much better than traditional fluorocarbons. Most fluoros, if you've had experience with them, you know they can be really stiff, kind of unwieldy to manage. Suffix has tried to address that, and they've done a great job with it in making this Advance. It fishes a lot more like mono. It's not as slinky. You're not dealing with you know big blow up problems with it. It's just a really manageable line and it transmits bites on slack incredibly well. Oh, that's a better one. I think so. 
God, as whoa, Ooh, wow. they are fun. How do you like that? Just a great average we're getting in here. Yeah. Like Jim said, though, you just don't have, you don't feel like when you hook them on this Tokyo rig, like a jig, like, oh man, I got to get it in the boat. I don't want them to jump. I feel like they're going to get off. Just because that weight is separated, the fish don't seem to get leverage as well. And you don't have that piece of lead in the front when you're setting the hook, opening their mouth. So every, as soon as they bite, it's like you get purchase instantly on them now. The other thing is the, you know, the rod, the reel and the line that we're fishing. Right now I'm fishing with St. Croix Bass X. This is a seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate fast action. I wanna share with you a little bit about the moderate fast action on these rods. I love flipping, pitching, and punching. And I've found in a lot of cases, having that mod fast helps you find purchase in the fish's mouth a lot better than a fast action. You know, the fast action on the rods is nice because the tip loads quickly and you can bounce off cover really well, especially jig fishing or punching. But when it slows down a little bit and the rod loads a little better, once that fish bites and you go to set the hook, the hook tends to slide and find purchase more so than a super fast rod where it basically explodes out of the fish's mouth. So I found that to be a really, really nice action in the rods. And then I've got it on a Daiwa Tatula 100, and this is a 7.3 to one. I recommend fishing faster reels for this type of application. When you're fishing bottom, you wanna be able to pick up slack quick. So a 7.3 or an eight gear ratio is definitely the way to go when you're Tokyo rigging. There he is. Oh, that feels so good. Wow. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. There he is. Oh, that feels so good. Wow, that's a good one. It's amazing how you can feel that cover with the tungsten and you just soak it. Once you get there, you just Ooh. soak it. He's not even that big, but he no, said, he was a... I like pulling, man. Wow. You could definitely feel there's a rock down there. He's got weeds with him, so he was with both the rock weed combo. Let's see if I can get my act together and grab the line here. That is absolutely sweet, sweet, sweet. Nice chunky ones. We're just getting a great average here today. Okay, big black worm is going to produce. At some point in time, we're going to get a big boy here. What? Wow. Oh, they're just crazy. In the yeah, aren't they? Water. Yeah, that warm water. It's almost 78 degrees. We've actually had a really pretty distinct warming trend. It's the middle of summer right now. It's a great time for these bass to be moving from basically the, you know, the near shore stuff and they start making a big movement out to this offshore stuff. And it is one of those days where it is like, it's supposed to be 90 today. It's like 100% humidity, absolutely muggy. And whether you're fishing when it's super cold or it's super hot like this, being comfortable keeps you on the water and catches you more fish. And so we've been wearing this black fish clothing their outerwear and, and these performance shirts like this. And it's amazing how much cooler you stay wearing a, a nice shirt like this designed for fishing in hot weather as opposed to wearing the classic cotton Ooh. tee where you're sticky, you're clammy, the moisture doesn't wick. This stuff is absolutely Whoa. amazing, especially for fishing in this warm weather like we've got right now. Another great fish. Hey, if you haven't gone out and experimented yeah. with some of the great new plastics rigging techniques like Tokyo rigging, get out, try a few because it's an absolutely dynamite way and an efficient way to catch lots of bass and some real honkers too. You know, every year I get an opportunity to speak at a number of churches or, or sports shows or, or, or fishing events someplace and uh, uh, almost inevitably somebody will come up to me with one of our old books, in this case, First Light on the Water, or, or, or Reflections at First Light, or some fishing books, or an in-fisherman magazine that we did many years ago, and they'll ask me uh, uh, to autograph it, autograph the date, it, and it isn't rare for somebody to ask me, hey, put your favorite scripture on there, would you please? And I'm gonna share my favorite scripture with you. When the Word of God became real to me, out of my head and into my heart, I got into the Bible 
and it was like an eye opener to me. You know, I said, I can't believe what I'm reading. Yeah, I heard about the Bible in there, but I mean, the word for the first time I was able to hear. I got clarity of thinking, and I couldn't believe what I was reading and, he and hearing. I said, how did I miss this all my life? I thought I was a pretty smart guy. I'm successful, we're making money, we're building a business, da 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 da. How did I miss so much simple, factual truth that'll impact your life in a positive way? Well, one of those scriptures was in the book of Proverbs, and uh, uh, which I read every year a couple different times. I love Proverbs. It's Proverbs 16.3. It says, commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. Again, commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. When I read those words, those words become alive to me. It got into my heart, it burned into my heart. It became absolutely real to me. And uh, I shared that with my wife and my brother and my sister-in-law. And uh, what we did at the time, we owned In Fisherman Magazine, and uh, we went to our office, we laid hands on our office building, prayed over the building, dedicated the fruits of our labor, the building, and everything we do to His glory and honor. And at that point, if you look at everything we do, you'll see a little ichthys uh, on it. It's that ichthys, it's a fish with a little cross on it. We put that, it became part of our corporate logo. And that's just a simple statement that we made to glorify God in all that we do and give Him glory and honor in it. And that is a, a, such an important part of our life. That's how that little ictus logo came to be. But it's our way of saying, thank you, Lord. All we do and everything we plan to do is done in line with your word and for your glory and honor. Real simple. Commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. Maybe it'll become real to you like it was to me. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. See you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.